Hello guys. Today is a let me try it. I'm making the chicken fettuccine alfredo that I make all the time. I don't have instructions or directions, but I will link the recipe. I got it from allrecipes.com and it's a chicken fettuccine alfredo sauce recipe, obviously. I do it a little bit differently every time because I've made it so many times that I just kind of wing it now, but I'm going to follow it as best I can. So let us get started. This is a 10, okay? Step one, look at that tongue. I've been eating these like a madman. I got them at Albertsons and they're really tasty. I just had a watermelon one. This is a strawberry. That has nothing to do with this video. What you want to do first, look at this. I bought these, when did I go grocery shopping? Saturday. When this happens to you, just cut it off. The rest of it's fine. I promise. This also calls for mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, just omit them. I have made this recipe for people that hate mushrooms and they don't even notice them. But if you really, really can't stand it and you just have the st strongest aversion to mushrooms, then just don't put them. I just get the regular old white sliced mushrooms and I wash them off, but it's not necessary. Neither are the tomatoes. And initially, because when I started cooking, I was a little picky, but I'm trying to expand my palate. I don't want to be a picky eater. I want to be able to eat everything. So I was like, tomatoes and mushrooms. And like, I didn't, I didn't want to put them in, but I'm so glad I did. And I do now, every time. And I had out to thaw a big old bag of chicken. Never put this bag in your fridge straight from the freezer because it leaks. Just so you know. I've tossed this bag because I thought, oh, it's a bag in the fridge one time and it was the biggest mess because it's raw chicken juice and it, I had to completely sanitize everything in my fridge all over again. It was pretty incredibly horrible. I've made the chicken for this recipe. I usually make more chicken than it calls for because my husband likes a lot of meat. I sometimes make it on the stovetop, but today I'm just going to roast the chicken real quick in 400 degrees for like 20 minutes. So I'll show you how I do that, okay? Am I recording? Yes. I like to get all my ingredients out. So I grab the chicken, I need some butter. Six tablespoons of that. Here's eight, that'll do. Then I need four cloves of garlic, minced and divided. If you've watched my videos, you've known me to just squirt a bunch of this and I can never tell the difference. I've made all these recipes with real garlic cloves, and I mean this is real garlic, but it's in like an olive oil paste or something, but I, I, you can never taste the difference. So I just use that because it's easy to squirt instead of to mince and all that. Italian seasoning. Right here like that. Just get you some Italian herbs, shall we? We also have one onion, diced. I have yet to do that, so I'll chop that up. Let's give us some light. Mushrooms, flour. Oh. I need some salt. I need some white pepper. Do I have to open a brand new white pepper? Listen, I found three, I found three, th three canisters of Quaker oats sealed. Every time I go, I'm like, do I have oats? And then I get oats. You need white pepper? Listen, white pepper? Which I've talked about this before. White, ground white pepper to me smells like a cow pasture. Oh, this is sealed too. Well, son of a gun, this expires April of 19. And this one expires, let's use the one that expires first, March of 19. Looks like I'm going to use this one because it expires a month sooner, three years from now. White pepper, to me, smells like 
a horse pasture. I think it smells really bad, but I continue to use it because the dish ends up tasting amazing. But there's just something, like it smells like pepper, but then this, the, there's something in there that smells like horse pasture in a bad way. of milk. We keep homogenized milk because my husband likes full fat everything. He likes to try to gain weight as it is hard for him to do so. We also need half and half which I don't have so I have heavy cream which I'll just use a little bit more milk and less heavy cream because heavy cream is thicker than half and half. I don't know where I put it. Uh, you saw it in my vlog. I whipped it up. The kitchen man just tried to murder me. So then I need Parmesan cheese. I much prefer to grate my own Parmesan cheese. The flavor is so much better than the little canister you buy. If you're lazy, I don't mean to call you lazy. If you just don't feel like uh, shredding your own, then you don't have to. Like It tastes fine. But I really do love the flavor. Freshly shredded Parmesan or any cheese freshly grated if it calls for shredded cheese I usually like to freshly grate it except for when I'm making my husband's breakfast burritos in which case I just use the Or cheese combo. I don't know. Why am I talking about that? then Oh, and this is another one look I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite. the other cheese I get Colby Monterey Jack in a block and I know I've seen it before at least I think and if I ever can find it I think I did one time I shred it otherwise the only way I find Colby Monterey Jack cheese is pre-shredded and it's always craft I cannot find Sargento which is the one I prefer when it comes to cheeses like provolone and Swiss the, the sandwich slices of cheese otherwise the only Colby Monterey Jack cheese I can find is a craft bag. But that's okay because it tastes amazing anyhow. We need three Roma tomatoes, which I've got right here. What we will do, every light in the house is on, just in case you ever do get tired of being gone. I'm getting my handy, trusty little lodge cast iron pot, the one I use to make my sauces. I love this. One day I will have a Le Creuset, or however you say it, pot, but one of those is like 350 which is ridiculous, but I will have it one day. This was from this morning and I need to wash it. Which I will do right now because I refuse to cook when I have dishes in the sink. It just makes me irritated. So I'm going to stop this and get you at a different angle eventually. I really do apologize for these horrible angles. I just, I can't. I can't. I don't want this right now. This is just a regular sheet pan and I've covered it with foil for easy cleanup. I need to dry off my chicken. So I'm usually very economically sound, but when it comes to paper towels and long showers, those are my two, like, you must hate Mother Earth type of, I love Mother Earth, but I really am bad with paper towels. I use them a lot. But I use, I use them to dry meat. I feel like I can't do that with regular towels. I'm gonna get lint all over the food, you know? Here we have a bunch of chicken. It said on the recipe to use six boneless, skinless chicken breast halves. That's a, I don't know, however much meat you have, just use that, whatever. Sometimes I use a lot more, sometimes a lot less. I do prefer when I'm trimming 
chicken is to use some chicken scissors. I mean some kitchen scissors. <laughs> I think it is so much easier than a knife. And I just trim off the fat. Just like that. Super simple. This little piece of fat right in there, you just cut that off. I don't know why I never thought to use them until years later in my cooking uh, adventures, but I do use kitchen scissors now and I think it's a brilliant idea. And then I like to cut them in half to be about the size of a chicken tenderloin because they cook a little faster. Dry, dry, dry. If you're throwing wet meat into a frying pan especially, if you just have some really hot olive oil, you won't get that crispy sear. So it really is wise. I know I'm just roasting them, but it is wise to get up that moisture because it gives better texture, especially when you're pan searing in my opinion. Okay. What I'm going to do is give these a little salt on both sides and pepper. I do not like this pepper mill. I can't get... I want a pepper mill that I can get the pepper to grind fine or coarse. And this one just isn't very impressive. I'm going to take that same Italian seasoning and I'm just going to sprinkle it on why not as I roast these. Maybe give them a little onion and garlic powder. Why not? I really like seasoning food. I feel like if you season, Bobby Flay says to season at each step. So there's depth of flavor everywhere. And I totally agree. So then I'm going to use one hand to just flip these over. We're just going to set this chicken on the pan. Try not to crowd them. Sometimes I have to. I used to do this in a 9x13, but I felt like I didn't have enough surface area for a whole bag of chicken. So I was like, well, why not just do it on a sheet pan? So that's how I've been doing it as of recent. And it works out pretty well. Just like that. Totally perfect. So let me sanitize this situation. Now I'm just going to roast these puppies in the oven for about 20 minutes. Let me just talk to you guys. Oh dear. I look like a schmuck of telly. I do have a thermopen which was featured in America's Test Kitchen. They tweeted it, and I got it when it was on sale. These are like $179 or something incredibly ridiculously expensive. But I've had... I threw them away, obviously. I don't know why I looked for them. But I used to have thermometer... Just a regular thermometer with a round top, and they were not accurate at all. They all read different things. They kept breaking. I kept buying them over and over again. And I really do love having a thermometer and I thought it would be wise to purchase one. Purchase a really good one. And I did. And it reads in just a couple seconds. And it's by, it's a, uh, look it's reading my temperature. That's freaking wild. Anyway, I've tested it in boiling water. I've tested it I've tested it um, all the ways I could think of to test it, and it's super accurate. And every time, like especially if you're not comfortable with cooking with meat, like for me when I first started cooking with fish, I was a little hesitant because I was like, I don't want to burn the fish, and I don't know how, how much done's done. So to be able to stick something in the center of the meat to tell you that it's exactly perfectly fine, like I'll cook the chicken to 160, it'll raise to about 165 as it comes out of the oven and cools. I think salmon's 145, and that's medium rare. 
steak also. It just helps you to cook meat perfectly every time. And I used to overcook like years ago. I would be so terrified to have underdone chicken. I didn't want to die. So I would overcook the chicken. It was always so dry. But investing in a good thermometer has definitely helped me step up my meat game. So my meat is always really tender and juicy because I don't overcook it because I have kind of a cheat. I feel like I'm cheating, but I love this thing. So when these are done in about 20 minutes, I'll stick one through the center. I'll look at the fattest, I'll look at the fattest piece of chicken that looks the thickest as if, that looks the thickest so that I know it would cook the slowest. And if that big old fat chunk is done, I know that the rest of the really small ones are done. But I still do kind of randomly check the small ones anyway, but that's how I'm going to check the chicken. There are several different ways that you can cook the chicken. You can boil the chicken. You don't have to season the chicken. You can just pan fry the chicken. It doesn't matter. As long as you have cooked chicken, you can buy shredded chicken from the grocery store pre-done if that's how you roll. But I always think that's really expensive to do. Now we're going to come over here and cut produce. Okay, you're sitting in the sink because that's honestly the only way I knew I can't. The hardest part about a let me try that is the fact that this is how much counter space I have, literally, on both sides. I have this on one side of the sink and on the other. And it's just really hard to do, but I'm really trying. Y'all, let me wash these. Let me cut off the nasty. Look, look at that. Don't waste your produce. Totes fine. Here I've got my onion. I need sour cream. Yes, I do. I forgot about the sour cream. I'm just going to roughly chop these. They're sliced, but I like them diced. Besides, I think it's fun to cut mushrooms. It feels cool. I don't know what about it. And I love chopping celery. It's so crunchy. This is what it asks you to do. Nothing. So this is what I do. <laughs> I have two recipe cards for this, and I uh, one of them actually starts you off and the other doesn't, so whatever. I'm going to put this on about medium-high heat, and then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, just so that I can start getting the uh, carrots. Why did I try to say carrots? So I can start getting the onions translucent. Shoot. Translucent. So I'm going to let that get hot. Well, that wasn't recording when I showed you. I took he half heavy whipping cream and half milk to make my own half and half because I didn't have half and half. Uh, I can smell the olive oil something. Did you see that save? Because I saw that save. <laughs> Shit. This is a Rachel, a Rachel Ray pot. My mom hipped me to this. It sits, it doesn't sit on the burner, like it doesn't. I don't know, it's just really long. And it fits noodles perfectly so that you don't have to bend your noodles. So we're going to give it some salt and put it to a boil. This says four cloves of garlic. Just squirt a clove size squirt. One, two, three, four. In there to estimate a clove. <laughs> it really doesn't matter because when you're making pasta, I mean, you can't go wrong with garlic. I'm also going to add the butter at this point. I believe the recipe tells you to remove the onions, but I've never done that because I'm too lazy to get them out of the pan, to start the roux, to put them back in the pan, and I've never had a problem. So I always just add the butter and the flour at this point to start the roux, and I've never, never had a problem. Now I'm going to add a third of a cup of flour. And then 
just cook it off so it doesn't taste like flour. After you get kind of a mushy paste going with your onions, flour, and butter and garlic, I add the milk. I add it little by little just because I feel like it helps thicken at a more reasonable pace. If I were to dump this all in here, I feel like it would take forever to thicken to a sauce. So I'll add a little bit of the milk and then I'll do, uh, jeez. Like this is my life, listening. This kid though, I'm telling you, is he has separation anxiety or something because whenever his mom leaves that's what he sounds like and she just feeds it she'll run back to him and say it's okay she draws out the process and I feel like that's really not a good thing what how much does this say I'm over here talking three quarter teaspoon oh I'm gonna add a little bit more milk see how much see how fast that's getting getting thick pretty fast I love these teaspoons because they are narrow enough to fit in pretty much any spice jar I have. I dumped some a little in, so we'll just... God, it smells like manure. It smells like a cow, a cow, a horse pasture. It really does. I'm a little shy on a tablespoon, but I salted the chicken, so it doesn't bother me. I can always salt in the end but I can never take away the salt, so I always like to be a little careful. Besides, all the cheese going in here is pretty salty anyway, to begin with. See how thick it is? A tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I did put Italian seasoning on the chicken already, but I feel like you can never go wrong with a good healthy dose of herbs. What I like to do is put it in my hand Ina taught me this, I think, and I like to rub it because it just releases the, it just releases the flavor, I feel like. Breaks up the old dried herbs and kind of opens them up and it's just more fragrant and flavorful. Not all of the juice that comes from the pan because that's a lot of flavor, so I just like to give me all of that. Give me all of that. This up. And add your half and half or makeshift half and half. And even if you added all the milk at one time, it'll still thicken up eventually, even if it feels like it never will. It will. Here, we're going to add three quarter cup grated parmesan. It smells so good. So much better than that canister of parmesan. The hard end of the parmesan is the rind and it doesn't look like this has a rind. It's usually a darker color but a lot of people chop that or grind it to the that part and put the whole chunk which doesn't exactly melt down but it adds a lot of flavor so I know a lot of people will put the rind in their sauce as it simmers on the stove and then they'll fish it out later. Kind of like a bay leaf. Just adds more flavor. This obviously isn't a recipe that you want to make if you're trying to lose weight. And I also do not recommend half fat, low fat, zero fat. If ever you're going to make a recipe and then judge it, please make it just as you see it. I remember um, giving this recipe to somebody at work and they were like it wasn't really good so they mentioned that they had used like 0% milk and margarine instead of butter and zero fat sour cream and I was like what? because um, they had tried it and loved it when I made it and then I gave them the recipe and they went and zero fatted everything and I was like did that not give you a clue? you can't the recipe didn't say to do that so I mean, you're more than welcome to. Maybe one of the things, maybe you don't have to add the half and half. It just won't be as creamy. You know, I'm sure that wouldn't affect the taste. But if you're going to alter it, don't go ham. And then be like, it didn't taste very good. 
Well, it's because a full fat dish like this isn't meant to be eaten every day, every week. A special occasion, like make it for a birthday or Valentine's Day or something. Or if you're my husband, he eats it every day because he's trying to gain weight. I really wish this water would boil. What I do is I make the entire box of fettuccine if I don't make my own pasta. And when I make the entire box, I make the pasta, the pasta sauce, I mix it all together and I save the portions in the freezer and I pull it out. And it keeps, I've kept it for a month. Maybe longer, I don't know, but it keeps for a long time. Now it would like you to add an entire 8 ounce bag of Colby Monterey Jack cheese. You are planning on freezing it and storing it like I do. It says to cook it 12 to 13 minutes, but I'll only do maybe 11 minutes, sometimes 10. It depends on my rolling boil, but I'll test it. And I, I like it just before it's finished because as it sits in the sauce, and it's in the freezer and then you reheat it, it cooks up the noodle. I feel like if you cook it to the full 13 minutes and then save it in the freezer and then reheat it, the noodles are a little bit too done. I feel like I added more mushroom than I normally do. If you don't like mushrooms, don't add them like I said or don't add as much as I did. Maybe just a few so you can escape them if you end up not liking them. But. I like them. Really, it just needs to simmer because the onions were cooked to translucent, the chicken is cooked, the mushrooms don't take long to get tender. The longer it sits, the better it tastes, in my opinion. So the next day it'll taste even better. It tells you to take it off of the heat. I'm just going to turn it off. And that's the point that you add the tomato. Half a cup of sour cream. I'm just going to mix this up. We finally have a rolling boil. Let's just drop these puppies in. It's going to give them a good stir so they don't stick together. Yeah, after you balance the whole thing, you're going to come into the kitchen. You're going to get out of the middle. You're going to start it. You're going to start it. You're going to start it. You're going to ask where you want to start it. You're going to start it in your C drive. All right, when you're downloading it, though, is it downloading to your computer or to the terabyte? No. Before you go to copy and put it on the other side? What I like to do is take whatever portions I didn't have enough, and then I just take the sauce wow. and I freeze the sauce. Then I'll take the sauce out of the freezer as I want to use it and then just boil the noodles and then add the sauce. I'll take the sauce out of the freezer like the night before so that it's... Set it in the fridge so that I can just add it to the pasta. Oh, good Lord Jesus. <laughs> Is it good? Get out of the tent. Get out of the tent. It might be my favorite pasta sauce. In my opinion. Running out of battery and the camera is tilted and Yeah, I'm just filming my outro. I've eaten this huh? I've eaten this pasta a thousand times and it's a ten. I usually taste it at the end of the video, but I've been eating the sauce pretty much as I've been waiting for the noodles to boil and I filled up on the sauce <laughs> because it's a 10. I do I do believe I like this even more than I like my spaghetti. It is hands down probably my favorite pasta in the world. Is it your favorite pasta in the world? Hmm? Is it your favorite pasta in the world? The one with the bacon is my favorite. Oh you like the bacon? I should make the bacon carbonara. That's his favorite. Bacon carbonara is vote what do you vote the bacon carbonara? A 10? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 15. A 15? Oh yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to make the bacon carbonara for you guys, and it's actually pretty easy, so I'll film that as my next to let me try that. Pasta, pasta, pasta. Pasta. <laughs>